Good day, class. After learning about the Agile development in extreme programming and also its importance, this time let me share and discuss again one of the Agile process models who are currently being used by most of the software development companies, which is the Scrum. Let us start by exploring the history of Scrum. First, the history of Scrum method starts in 1986. That year also, two Japanese business experts, Hirotaka Takeyoshi and Ikojiro Nonaka, introduced the term in the context of product development. The name Scrum was derived from an activity that occurs during a rugby match that the team tries to go to the distance as a unit, passing the ball back and forth. Also, Jeff Sutherland originated the first Scrum project in 1993. Sutherland, working with Ken Swaber, developed Scrum as a formal process in 1995. In 2001, Sutherland and Swaber, along with several pioneers of Agile, thinking converge at this key resort in Utah to assess uh, commonalities in Agile methods. The Agile Manifesto was created out of this group's consensus. Let's start understanding about the principles in Scrum. Scrum principles can be applied to any type of project in any organization and must be adhered in order to ensure effective implementation of the Scrum framework. Keeping the principles intact and using them appropriately instills confidence in the Scrum framework about attaining the objectives of the project. The Scrum aspects and processes, however, can be modified to meet the requirements of the project or the organization. Let's start understanding the first principle, which is the empirical process control. This principle emphasizes the core philosophy of Scrum based on the three ideas of transparency, inspection, and adaptation. Next, we have the next principle, which is the self-organization. Self-organization, this principle focuses on today's workers who deliver significantly greater value when self-organized and this results in better team buy-in and shared ownership and an innovative and creative environment which is more conducive for growth. Third principle is what we call collaboration. This principle focuses on the three dimensions related to collaborative work. We have awareness, articulation, and appropriation. It is also advocates project management as a shared value creation process with teams working and interacting together to deliver the greatest value. Since we're talking already with greatest value, let's proceed to our fourth principle which is called value-based prioritization. This principle highlights the focus of Scrum to deliver maximum business value from early in the project and continuing throughout. Fifth principle is what we call time boxing. This principle describes how time is considered a limiting constraint in Scrum and used to help effectively manage project planning and execution. Lastly, we have the iterative development. This principle defines iterative development and emphasizes how to be better manage changes and build products that satisfy customer needs. Basically, this is the reason why Agile and Scrum framework exist because of the iterative development. In understanding Scrum, we also need to understand and define the rules and also the responsibilities in the Scrum project team. This is very important for ensuring the successful implementation of Scrum. 
By the way, the organization or the rules for Scrum, which is fall into two broad categories. We have the core rules and non-core rules. Core rules, these are the rules inside the square. Core rules are those rules which are mandatorily required for producing the project's product or service. Individuals who are assigned core rules are fully committed to the project and are ultimately responsible for the success of each project iteration and of the project. We have the first rule, which is what we call product owner. Product owner, this is the person responsible for achieving maximum business value for the project. He or she is also responsible for articulating customer or user requirements and maintaining business justification for the project. He or she also maintains the business um, communication. He also or she also needs to make sure that all of the information from the business will be channeled correctly to the team. The product owner represents the voice of the customer. Basically, they are the business analysts in the team. Next, we have the Scrum Master. He or she is the facilitator who ensures that the Scrum team is provided with an environment conducive to complete the project successfully. The Scrum Master, he or she guides, facilitates, and teaches Scrum practices to everyone involved in the project. He or she also clears inhibitions for the team and ensures that the scrum processes are being followed. If you have more questions about the job description or the responsibilities of scrum master, you can just ask um, our speaker this coming October 1st. Actually, he uh, don't hesitate to ask him because he can answer you directly. Okay? Let's proceed. Let's talk about the Scrum team. This is the group or the team of people who are responsible for understanding the requirements specified by the product owner and creating the deliverables of the project. After discussing about the core rules, let's talk about the non-core rules. Non-core rules are those rules which are not mandatorily required for the Scrum project and may include team members who are interested in the project. They have no formal role in the project team and may interface with the team but may not be responsible for the success of the project. The non-core rules should be considered in any Scrum project. Non-core rules include the following. We have stakeholders, we have Scrum Guidance Body or the SGB, and we also have the vendors. Let's talk about stakeholders. Stakeholders, these are the, uh, uh, which these term, it's collectively that includes customers. We also have users, sponsors, who are frequently interfaced with the Scrum core team and influence the project throughout the project's development. Basically, they are the one who receives the finished product. Then, let's talk about the Scrum Guidance Body, or SGB. SGB is an optional rule, which generally consists of a set uh, of, a set of documents or a group of experts who are typically involved with defining objectives related to quality, government regulations, security, and other key organizational parameters. This SGB guides the work carried out by the product owner, Scrum Master, and Scrum Team. Lastly, we have vendors. Vendors including external um, external individuals or organizations provide products and or service that are not within the core competencies of the project organization. So those are the Scrum organization. If we will compare waterfall model to Scrum framework, 
Scram delivers features at a time, while Waterfall simply delivers faces. A traditional Waterfall-style development is face-based and sequential process that will not give value until the very end of the project. Scram turns that model on its head and delivers new features every few weeks instead of focusing on a big release in the future. Scrum actually divides complex work into simple, uh, simple pieces, large organiza uh, organizations into small teams, and far-reaching projects into a series of short-time horizons called sprints. To know more about Scrum software development process, I will be presenting other references from CollabNet software company which actually they are headquartered in Georgia, United States, and who uses Scram in their main process model in delivering software.